Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. And so the time between when I last spoke to you and now doesn't even exist for me. It is so difficult to explain to a linear human being what it is like not to have a clock. that all things occur at once it's an odd thing to talk about for your future to you is not known and your past cannot be revisited and so to you you are always in the present we are too but we call it the now and we include the past for their only energies and although the actions in 3D cannot be changed, the memories of them can. The influences of them can. They can be rewritten in your DNA. It is part of the now. It changes you now. So something you do about your past changes the now. So what have you done, really? You visited the past. The future you say is not known to you, it is not known to us, and yet the potentials of what you might do are. As you change your mind now, in a certain way you change the potentials, therefore rewriting the future, that is our now. We see it all one. It helps us to give you the kind of channel we're going to give you. We're going to call the channel the three winds. Much of this information has been given in pieces and parts over many years. You've heard some of the terminology alluded to. And now we wish to just lay it out as a carpet that will contain a lot of answers, perhaps some controversies because they don't agree with things that you might have heard in the past from others. And this is where the discernment is yours and always has been. To see if the things make sense that I'm going to tell you and use what we have called spiritual logic. First of all, the human being and the human being's soul will see as one. And the actual truth is that you are in four places in this carpet of time. The three winds are three of the four, and the other place is home. That's where I am, and we don't call it a wind, because there is no wind when you're home. There is no action for or against. There's nothing pushing and pulling. It is so difficult, if not impossible, to describe to you something that is so close to you but so hidden. The peace of God in you and what it is like to be on this side of the veil will remain hidden. It has to. For the test of energy that you are about as a human being must remain in a certain reality and consciousness for you to perform the test. But there's no wind when you're home. You're a piece of the soup of God, which is measured in unnumberable parts and yet all is one. The very essence of entanglement represents God, where there can be many, but they all move as one. When you are in touch with your higher self, you are in touch with the one. Sometimes humans think that they'll get messages from angels and the angels are giving messages from other angels and so on and so forth. They'll see an arc, a hierarchy in heaven. There's no such thing. For well, the wisdom of God is the wisdom that is a singular wisdom. It is always the same wisdom. The truth is the truth. And because you have a piece of God in you, you become aware of the truth all at once. 
And this is why you can take an awakening human being in another part of the world that is foreign to you, speaking another language which is foreign to you, and if you ask them about certain things, they'll give you the same things you believe. Because it's coming right out of the same place. So honor your intuition as we go, that part of your mind which discerns as we go. And some of you may actually see what we speak of, the three winds. Human being, there's nothing more honored than the three winds. They represent the three states that humans are in. Two of them are brief and one of them is long. There is the wind of birth, there is the wind of existence, and there's the wind of transition. In your words, you would say birth, life, and death. We don't use those words. The wind of birth is different than just birth. For birth to you is the actual physical event. The wind of birth is you right before you enter. In each of these cases, we're going to start with dismissing the fallacies and giving you the rules, the truth. So let us discuss as much as we can and start with the wind of birth. you're ready to go back to the planet. What is involved? What energies have spun around it that get you to this place? Who is able to be in the wind of birth? These things are difficult to describe for they're not linear. But you are aware of only linear things. So we're talking about coming back, are we not, after perhaps a lifetime you'd lived before. So you would expect in the wind of birth you were about to reconnect as a human being into the planet in a certain way. So what are the rules of this? as you connect again to humanity. Well, let me tell you what they're not. The first thing you should know is that the human being is unique. On this planet, coming and going, humans all are the same. They all have a higher self, every single one. The structure of the DNA and the potentials within are identical. And the only thing that differentiates one from another in the DNA would be the Akashic Record. But the Akashic Record holds within it the ability and potential for enormous energy. Depending upon what you have done in past lives. If you have awakened to spiritual potential, there is more energy than if you have not. Therefore, the creation of an enlightened old soul is literally available at the wind of birth. For it's what you've done before, who you were, what you accomplished, if you awakened earlier, if you're working the light puzzle or not. So the Akashic record is not just a record of how many times you've been here but how much spiritual knowledge you've awakened to. For in that library that I spoke of before that you pick up and hold through your life and into the next will help you to know what the next life is going to be like. Because of the axiom we've given you before that says you will never have to relearn anything. That once you open the door, it is all available, all lifetimes, all learning. 
Therefore, what I'm about to tell you is this. The human being is a piece of God. Unique. It is not an animal. Animals have their own kinds of energies, even some of them their own kinds of soul groups. Animals exist for several reasons, and we've told you before. All of them as part of the balance of Gaia and also as friends of humans. They hold the energy. Sometimes they, they love. They incarnate within their own groups many times. Their own soul groups coming back as animals. Many times as other animals. But listen to this. Never do they cross the barrier into a higher self being. Animals are not what you used to be graduating to humans. But it is very easy for humans to think that because this is the way school works. This is the way linear things work. You graduate into higher levels and you become better. Therefore, those who would look at the scheme of life would say, you start as animals and you become human and you don't. The human being has the beautiful higher self. It's the core soul of God. And how much of that you can accept and open the door to see it while you're alive is how enlightened you become. There is immense planning to put you at the wind of birth. What did you accomplish last time, if anything? Who were you and what did you do? What energies did you start that were not complete? What soul group were you in? Who were your parents? Are you in agreements to become their grandchildren, your grandchildren? There are so many things that go into the planning and each life path is different. It is unique. And humans don't like the fact that there is no instruction manual that says, here's what happened. Because humanity is honored way above that. Let me tell you something that happens that I've not discussed before in this way. There are certain attributes that humans get after they're here and we'll call them creative attributes that are actually almost quantum that take several lifetimes to complete and so what happens to the creatives is that they will go through a series of numbers of lifetimes as though it were one in order to have completion famous artists will come back the first thing they want to do is pick up a brush and continue, and they do. Famous composers, famous poets, sculptors. And they come back and keep going. <laughs> Some of the masters of the old. And you play this classic music and you say, why they don't make them like that anymore? You're wrong, they're here again. And so the creatives and the energy that they set up is different from the others. And so at the wind of birth, you stand there as a completely and totally unique creature. Ready to come back in the planet. You don't arrive with a blank slate. You have to know that. The only ones who arrive as a completely blank slate are the newbies. And we'll talk about that in the next wind. But this is a room of old souls. There are those who can read your Akash and they won't be reading every lifetime. They'll be one, the ones that stick out. The ones that have a profundity about them where you accomplished things or perhaps worse you didn't. Or dramatic things happen. It's all based on energy potentials. You'll hear that again. You're about to come back. 
and laying upon you are all these potentials and possibilities you're coming back as part of the family where you will be the gender that you will be and the place you will be within that place <laughs> is all part of the planning the most difficult thing for me to describe to you is the planning for this particular planning is not linear it's not something that you would see on a spreadsheet <laughs> it's energy based and it's based into family if you have awakened there is potential there that is not there if you have not and so an old soul will go to another place perhaps that a young soul would not all in the wind of birth and you're ready for it and we've talked about that moment before right before you come in to the planet the old soul especially the old soul in the new energy is completely different at the wind of birth the old soul who has awakened over and over and is coming back with that library filled with spiritual purpose is comfortable with the process remembers very fully what they've been through the old soul is not going to be subject to some of the energies that push and pull a younger soul the old soul has made up his or her mind as part of the planning what they were going to do the old soul may even have known it before they left this is the difference we've told you in previous channels some of the interesting differences between new humans and ones like you we told you that the DNA changes that you have provided through your enlightenment and knowledge is going to bring a child forward the next time you arrive who remembers how to read who doesn't have to be taught everything who can walk earlier and talk earlier because they remember it because the bridge in their DNA is starting to be complete between what was and what is therefore the human being to be born is not one with a clean slate that has to know absolutely everything from scratch but comes in with a full load and as their brain develops they then remember who they are this is the promise of the new energy especially after 2013 you're going to see some changes in your children as they come in the encumbrance of a planet that was going to be destroyed will not be among them the promise of a planet going into new uncharted areas of quantum energy and discovery will be upon them and they'll need a whole new set of tools all this to say watch for this all at the wind of birth they're ready to come in Oh, you've all participated in it. Everyone in the room has participated in this. There is no newbie here. Not all of you are old soul, that is to say, have been hundreds of times, but all of you have been here before. It makes it interesting, does it not? For the absorption of this knowledge is different between you. Very different. Some will sleep through it. Others will be awakened by it. We arrive now at the wind of existence and that you call life. Let us give you the, the rules. First, the things that it is not. No matter what you have been told on this planet, you are not here as punishment. you're not here to be tested we call this a test it's a test of energy 
that Gaia then measures and passes to the very fabric of the great central sun. It's a measurement of the earth. The test is whether humans can change that measurement. That's the test. Humans are not here to be tested. You're here as family. The bridge between the wind of birth and the wind of existence is where you remove everything you know about the truth. <laughs> You're no longer aware that you are a piece of the universe of God itself, where you came from, or what you've been through. You awaken to potentials of remembering these things if you've learned them or, re or, or learning them for the first time if you haven't done it before. Old souls don't necessarily awaken at all. Sometimes an old soul who has had a very difficult and profound lifetime previous will skate through this life as a vacation and never wake up. But you know they're old souls when you meet them. And you can see it in their eyes. Some of you have even married them. <laughs> and they may not be here at a meeting like this. But it's the very thing that attracted you. And that is why we say there are no rules that say you have to be here. That you have to awaken, that you have to help the planet, that you have to send light. There are no have-tos, dear ones, because it's complex with variety. And this time around, some are simply here to hold the energy of who they are. And next time around, they'll do the work. And some of you have had these attributes, and it's necessary. It's like a time of recalibration. And some of you would say, well, it's a, it's a waste of 80 years or more. It is not any more than it's a waste of three weeks when you go on vacation. <laughs> it's complex. It's all about timing what you do here during the wind of existence. Who are you? How many times have you been? Will depend upon what you go through. This has nothing to do with spiritual accounting. It doesn't have anything to do with punishment or reward. It has to do with learning. The ones who have been here most often will know better what to do about the conditions they find when they arrive. You put it into three categories. New, learning, and old. The newbies who show up as they have to because the planet expands in population you can you can know they're newbies in a minute because you say A and they say B you'll ask them to go left and they'll walk right they have no idea about anything and it shows they don't know how life works and you slap your head because you can't believe anybody could be that way <laughs> they're new they don't know about human nature, about human consciousness. They're the ones who can be tricked so easily by a human being who wants to trick them. Naive to the max in all directions. And you've seen them. And they're going to have to come back a number of times before they start understanding the whole process of how life works. So there's always a number of them. And they're not about to be in a meeting like this. They're, they're better off in a meeting that would be how humans work. <laughs> Some of them wind up on the psychologist's couch to discover how humans work. This sometimes will take them into poverty because they have no idea what to do from one place to another and they make mistakes you see them as naive and foolish they are 
And by the way, so were you. You get to a certain state where you come into the planet and you are aware of how things work and then you become a learner. What else is there? These are the ones who are the potential awakeners. Well, these are the ones who have the potential to come to a place like this, hear the truth, recognize it, or not. And if it's a or not, it just means it isn't time yet. Timing is everything. My partner asks many times, he said, why did I have to awaken to the truth in the middle of my 40s? It would have been so much more fun when I was 30, he said. And I have told him it's about timing. It's about placing him at the age he needs to be to do what he does now and also what he's going to do next. I'll get to that. And so, dear ones, in these three categories, most of the ones who sit in the chair are in the third category, and that is old soul. The ones who have awakened and are sitting, waiting for the instructions on what to do next. For they know their life's path. They know why they're here. They know the earth needs them. And each path is different. And so they're sitting in this one, in this room now. And this is the way it works, old soul. For some of you have awakened many times and your library is thick with spiritual purpose and some of you have just awakened a few of you this lifetime but you're an old soul now this may be complex but you also have a library of the Akash and that is to say <laughs> what is there that is truth that you can pull from that perhaps you didn't live personally but it's there anyway. Now this is very difficult. But now I broach a subject that I have not broached in this fashion before. So listen carefully. If it is true, dear human being, that you were seeded by an ascended race, that means that they are in your DNA. Everything that they know is in your DNA. You know where I'm going, don't you? That means that you can awaken to great amounts of truth that you never lived through because it's there from what they gave you. It goes beyond your Akash into a spiritual quantum Akash that belongs to those who seated you. And you start to pick up the truth of the universe, of the galaxy, of existence of God, way beyond your years. This is a new energy attribute that we wanted to give you this day. The learner, the second attribute of timing, is guided often by an old energy called karma. So let us make it straight what it is. Karma is unfinished business from one lifetime to another. It pushes and, pull and pulls you into areas and it has nothing to do with predestination. It has everything to do with predisposition. If you have a lot of karma, you're predisposed then to move left or right when certain conditions happen based upon the energy you came in with that pushes you there. We gave you information back in 1993 when Crying Book One was published that the old soul, the one reading the book has the permission to drop their karma completely and take the tiller of their own energy and steer it into an enlightened earth and we continue to say that and let you know that karma is an old system of learning and you're beyond it it's needed it's still there for the learners by the way karma is not even available to the newbie the new one coming in has no energy to pull from. That's why they're clueless. <laughs> but the second, third, and fourth time around, they start 
gleaning the energy that they produced as a clueless human. <laughs> and then it pushes them and pulls them into other places and that is karmic. They then come in with karmic family. They, in, they come in with karmic groups. You don't have to. Once you drop karma, you have severed that energy completely and it means the next time around, dear human being, dear old soul, you can call your own shot. And what we mean by that is you can plan today for what you're going to do the next time around. But I will warn you, don't plan it in 3D. You plan it with the love of the higher self together. Some of you have had those sessions already and you know what you're going to do, clearly. Some of you know where you're going to be, clearly. This is part of the new energy that speaks to you clearly. I want to talk about contracts because this is misunderstood. Some of you will come in and say, I am here doing what I'm supposed to do in this city because it is my contract. And another human being will come along perhaps with a better offer, perhaps it's romantic, perhaps it's spiritual and part of you pulls in that direction and says should I or shouldn't I and you bolster yourself up and you say my contract is to stay here and do this and I will give you a word that you should remember, nonsense. <laughs> Your contract is in invisible ink and every single day of an old soul's life it is rewritable. Did you know that? The only contract you have old soul is to be here and it's been fulfilled. Now pick up the pen and write it every day. And if synchronicity comes along and sweeps you into another area view it for what it is, what you ask for. Feel it as it occurs, is it true, is it not, should it be, should it not, and go with your intuitive feeling and write it in, in the ink that is invisible that will disappear tomorrow as you rewrite it into something even better. A contract is not something that you have today that is linear that you have to go through. And so when you use the word, use it properly and understand it. It's day by day. Old soul, right now, you've never had an opportunity in this new energy to change the wind of existence like now. In these next few years, you'll decide collectively on this planet a number of things, a number of things through very slow attrition of the old energy dying out you will gain the upper hand there will be greater integrity old souls will create it the very plan of what the earth is about will start to shape up eventually someone will come up with the idea of an alliance of nations and promises of help for one another. I've said it before, there'll be future generations that look back on everything that was 2012 and backwards as being the barbaric era. And you will see civilization as you know it started in 2013. That is the promise of this demarcation point. The wind of existence is you working the puzzle also. And you're not in karma and you're not in contract. You're in manifestation mode. And it may not seem like it. But give it a chance. And we've said this before, when you start getting out of survival mode and worrying about every single thing you'll start to get into manifestation mode the worry mode is what your parents taught you and you know it you can hear your mother and your father speaking in your mind 
as you worry about the things you worry about. <laughs> you inherited it. It's not what enlightened beings do. They manifest what they need. They don't worry about what they don't have for it comes to them when they need it. And the example has been clear and we've given it to you a number of times with the Israelis in the desert. Those Israelites for 40 years had everything they needed provided as they walked in a circle. And they worried every day. <laughs> Take the example of what they had there, not what they did with it. And the last wind. The wind of transition you call death. What can I tell you about this that you don't already know? I think I can tell you a lot. First of all, the rules. You don't know what you don't know. <laughs> you don't know when it's going to happen we need to keep some of you here a very long time because you're not done with what you started others of you we need to have transition soon by the way we have no clock so don't read anything into soon sooner than later for the same reason we need you at a place when you're young we need you to keep developing what you're developing now because you'll awaken to it and you'll have youth we need you to be a certain age to run for office <laughs> to take an enlightened state right into the parliament we need to have you young for certain reasons that should be very obvious to you as you think about it from our standpoint old soul and so you don't know cast away the fear of you don't know to understand that these things have the reasons that are profound and you helped plan them the very awakening process helps to decide when you're going to trans transfer the energy. Oh. I want to give you an attribute you hadn't really thought of. Death is fearful. In the corporeal sense, you can see it on earth that everything survives, survives, survives. The last thing anything wants, even a bacteria, is to die. Survival then pushes you to life and nobody simply walks into death without fear. And that will remain that way. And it should be that way. But there is a gift for you that we give you and you don't even know about it. And I'll tell you what it is. At the moment of transition, when the heart stops and the, the last breath is exhausted that you will breathe, and another one does not come, and we know that the transition is happening, we're there. Oh, we're there. And all the angels. For the great central sun are there. And they kindle a light. That puts you in peace. So that fear cannot exist. And in a fraction of a second. You know it's okay. You might call it a spiritual anesthetic. We call it the gift of heaven. So that the wind of transition from a quantum standpoint is beautiful. 
That if you don't go from that fear for that instant when you realize you're not going to take another breath, it's only for a second. And then it's gone. And you're moved into the process of a three day remembrance of who you are. Part of you remains here. Part of you is with us. And all of it is beautiful. Some humans have gone through a near death experience and explained it the best they could and they came back different. Oh, a human being, they saw a piece of it. They saw a wing of the one angel. And when they came back, they said, you won't believe it. I was dead for a moment and I couldn't believe it. It was beautiful. I heard singing, they said. Ask them, ask them. And they'll tell you. And that is our gift. And we've never talked about it before. The gift during the transition. There is no sting in death, human being. The only sting is for the ones who remain. And don't know where you are. I'll tell you where you are. You're out of 3D. But you can see them. Everyone you loved and lost, dear one, is still here. The crystalline grid contains their memory. Some of them move into your guides. The parents you've loved and lost will be with you till your last breath in certain ways holding your hand. This is complex. Human beings, you ought to know that your soul group can be in several places at the same time. We've given you that information before. They can be reincarnate into another human soul and also be with you as a guide. Don't ask the question, how? Because only in 3D can you even imagine these things and they don't explain how. It's a beautiful system. Death has no sting. If you lose somebody you love, I want you to remember this. They may appear still and cold and gone forever. That's just in 3D. That's not the truth. Alive and well and looking at you, pleading you, with you, to see the energy of love that they represent. Not gone. Those are the three wins for today. I love to talk about these things for they are near to me. I work with all three. I'm working with them right now. The energy which is cryon is a group just like all of you are. And the part of the group right now which is consoling those at the window birth <laughs> that it's going to be okay. <laughs> and welcoming those in the transition that know it's okay. And working with those in existence who are not really sure. <laughs> this is the role of spirit through the higher self that is yours. Discovery of God inside. The plan is beautiful, dear ones. And so it is.